Hi everyone. Uh, I'm based in Facebook London and before like while I was preparing this talk, I had all those all these cool and amazing cartoons and gifts then I thought to myself, "Oh my god, I'm going to states. I don't have license and states where you could be sued for anything." So I decided to not use them. I'm sorry. So I replace them with images from public domain. They are cool, but okay. So let's talk about static performance analysis with infer. So when you look at the development cycle of how the code goes from like the developers and lands to the product, you see that when the developer writes a code, it first goes through the CI system where you might do some like tests like type checking or run some tests and then afterwards you would send your code to some code reviewing system. In Facebook, this is like Fabricator, where several developers would review the code, and then once they say, oh, that looks good, the code would go to another CI system where there will be several set of tests, and in particular, in our case, there will be like some performance tests, but then of course, like you're running it in, there are lots of commits, so you can't run all the performance tests, right? You will run some of them, and you might not run the one that will like detect the regression, so okay, we might not, find the regression at this point, but then it goes, on, it goes on and it lands in the product, right? So then developers would be doing like lots of performance monitoring and try to see like, has there been any critical performance regressions? And then you'd see, okay, oops, there might be a performance regression, but it's already too late. It's like a car just going down off a cliff and this is the user and these are the perfect engineers looking like, what happened? It's like doing a post-mortem and trying to understand, hmm, what could have gone wrong, right? So say like, okay, you've detected a performance regression, and then what do you do? Well, often finding the root cause of such an issue, such a performance regression is very difficult, right? You might have to go look at like logs and see, how things have been, like which comments or which set of diffs might be causing it, and then you found it now. Great, good luck. Now what do you do? Are you gonna try to revert it, or are you try to fix it, right? Well, you can try to revert it, but what if it was like a critical issue that you wanted to launch on your product? Or you might say, okay, like let me fix it. But this process takes a lot of time, and you have to interact with so many developers like perf engineers or application developers, and there will be a lot of time passing, like a couple of days or maybe weeks, then you will try to say, okay, I fixed it, but then now you will need to double check that your fix improves the performance, right? So now, what is special about performance? When we look at the typical functional verification and testing pyramid, we see that there we have lots of like mechanisms. In this pyramid at the bottom you have like types, then there are some lints, and you can do static analysis, and then once you have done this, you go up, you have some unit tests, and on top of it, integration tests, and then end-to-end, -end, right? So the, the higher you go up, the more it will be costly and slower for you to do, right? Like I mentioned, you can't run all the tests on a production system. So what is different for performance? When we look at the performance analysis, we see that at the bottom of this pyramid, there is almost nothing, right? Types don't tell you anything about perf. Lints, okay, they might tell you a few things, but they are not gonna be very straight, like very informative. And static analysis, what about static analysis? Can we do something about using static analysis for detecting perf regressions? So that's our aim, and I'm going to tell you how we do this. And our aim is to do it in a way that such issues don't hit the production. So we want to do it before they hit the production. So at this phase, we are like a static traffic control point, and we will tell developers without they run the code if there are any issues with performance, right? And if there is an issue, we will say, oh, wait a second, like take a look and reconsider. And our whole aim is to shift this performance analysis to the left, to the less costly part, right? Where at the end here, the most right-hand side, it is very costly and it's not always possible. So that's why we want to shift left, stay on the left-hand side. 
So, and our, our arching aim doing this, uh, our arching aim is to bring value to developers before code is shipped. So, but what is static analysis? So, static analysis is a technique for computing semantic approximation. And let me show you this through an example. So imagine we have this program here. The white part is the program. And now assume that at the beginning we know that B is true, right? So this is like testing. You run your program and you say, okay, at the beginning we'll have B is true, X will be zero. Since B is true, we won't take the else branch. And then here we'll have B is true, X is zero, and then we'll have Y is equal one or X, right? Boom, you will have divide by zero error, right? You run the program, you will hit the bug. But this is not possible to do for like all combinations in a big system, right? So our aim with static analysis is not to like run the program, but instead try to semantically approximate it. So what do we do? In this case, we'll say at the beginning, hmm, I don't know what B is, right? Then I'll say, okay, the program can take the then or the else branches. So it could be taking like the then branch, then we'll have x equals to zero. And the other case, we'll have x equals to one, then we'll say, okay, x is non-zero. Notice that here I'm doing some approximation. I'm not saying like x is zero, x is one. We are over approximating here, which makes it very scalable. And then I will say, okay, at the end of the branch, I'll have x might be zero. So then I, then I will say, okay, potentially we will have a, we might have a divide by zero error here. So this gives you like an idea about what static analysis does. And what about static execution cost analysis? In static execution cost analysis, we are not just interested in functional behaviors of programs, but also execution costs. So in this case, I have the same program, just slightly modified. In the else branch, I will have like some function called bar. And now try to see how do we compute the execution cost here, right? If you were to run it and say, okay, like for simplicity, let's assume every instruction takes a unit cost, then we will say, okay, in this case, at the beginning, we have zero cost. We haven't run anything. Then and the then branch, we will have, okay, B is true. Then we will have one cost for if, one cost for equality, uh, like assignment. Then we have two cost. At the end, we exit the condition, three cost, and finally we will have like four cost, some constant cost, right? Makes sense. This is a straight line program. Um, but what about static analysis? Well, in this case, so Im imagine again, like here, if you were to do like test this program, our profiling and everything would tell us like, okay, you have constant. But in the static analysis case, we will have to say that, okay, I don't know which branch might be taken, so in the case of like the if branch, we have two costs, but in the case of else branch, we'll have the cost of the function bar plus one. So finally we will get, okay, at the end, we will have maximum of this constant cost for then, or cost, and then the cost of bar plus one. I mean, the constants doesn't matter, but as you can see at the end, the final cost of this program could be very expensive if the function bar is an expensive function. Say it's linear or quadratic, right? So static analysis allow us to over approximate this and say that, okay, this function could potentially be very expensive. So I will tell you about uh, Facebook's state of the art static analysis tool, which is called Infer, which is, it is open source and it can detect many non-trivial functional issues like use after freeze, null pointer exceptions, but also static execution cost analysis. And it works for Java and C, C++, like Clang family of languages. And let's see. Um, so remember, like I told you this process of detecting regressions, right? We have like some perf test or we do some monitoring and then we detect the regression. The reason this doesn't work so well is because so many developers have to like interact, okay, perf engineers, application engineers, and then there will be lots of context switching. That's why it takes a lot of time. So we don't want to replicate the same thing. We don't want to say, okay, I have my mobile, like I have my app, I run infer on it, and I try to detect, say, the complexity of one function increases from like O1 to ON. And every day I run this like night nightly and I get some perf regressions. This doesn't work because this will take a lot of time. 
developers don't want to like switch such like switch between. So they just want to code. They don't like care which tasks you have every day. This will, I mean, they might care. You might have to ping them, but we don't want to do this. We want a better version. And that's why we try to do this at diff time. So whenever developers send their code for code review, we want to tell them, hey, like look at, there might be some complexity increase. There might be an asymptotic complexity increase in this case. And our aim is not to block the developer. And for such a system to work, our static analysis should be able to scale well. It shouldn't be really like slow and it's not practical. So, And that's what we have. And let me show you an example of how the static analysis works. Um, here's an example. Like you don't have to read the code, but like just you can see developers remove some code and then they replace this function with the new version, right? And then the new version calls this other function which has a loop in it. And what we will do in infer is that we will analyze that. Okay, in the first version, this is some straight line code which have complexity O1. And since the developer calls like another function, uh, we will automatically infer that the complexity increased. And we will be commenting like a normal developer our bot is called infer, okay, that there might be a com execution um, time complexity increase. This function's complexity increase from O1 to O length, like the size of the map here, and please understand this and try to see if this is an issue. And as you might imagine, like you might not see that like you just add the for loop here, you might say, oh, Elgi, this is like really trivial. You just add a for loop, but imagine that you have another function and another one that is calling. So like the reason complexity increase might be really complicated. And so you need to be able to understand this and we would also have an error trace here, which tells you, okay, how the complexity increase you would um, step by step would say, okay, the complexity increased because of this, and then it would tell you because of the for loop, and et cetera. And we introduce these issues only if the lines you change have caused a complexity increase, right? We don't want to show the developer, hey, you changed it here, as a result, somebody else calls this, and then you have this like whole upward chain of calls. So this will be against our principle of like get, getting in the way of the developer. We want to show them things that are in their context that they are right now working on. And we also have an IDE integration where developers can see like the IDE, um, what are the complexities of functions they could just hover over and then see like what is the complexity of this function. So the current status, um, so we are running this tool on all our Android code base at Facebook, for other apps as well, we are analyzing uh, tens of diffs per month, and we find lots of complexity increase issues. I can't tell you like exactly the fix rate here, but our success metric is the action taken, whether developers like acknowledge it and then see was this helpful for them, and if not, I will come back to this whether like fix rate is like a right metric. Um, and I'll tell you a bit more about it, but I want to tell you about like how this whole things work. You might say, oh, Isgi, like you are like a magician. You told me, inferred me the complexity of the program. Like how does this work? So infers architecture is like a similar to that of a compiler. So we have, we can analyze Java and Clang family of languages, and then we would translate them with our language frontends to our own intermediate language with a control flow graph. And then we would only analyze this intermediate form, right? The advantage is that like we don't have to do this over and over again for each front end and we can analyze this intermediate representation and then we can run various analyzers like null pointer difference used after three, but here, are, here we are talking about the cost analysis. So how does this work? Well, we would look at like, a, let's look at a simple example, this program which has a for loop, and then we will take this and translate it into our CFG that looks like this. I mean, you don't have to like read it, but as you can see, like there's a loop here, 
and then there's an exit condition, and this just summarizes. And what we will do is um, we will try to compute the cost of a node, and this is like the execution cost of all its instructions. And for our purposes, we will say, okay, each instruction costs a unit. And then the cost depends on how many times the node can be executed, right? Like if you're in the loop, this will be executed as many times as like K here. And then we would automatically infer this and combine it with a sophisticated technique called abstract interpretation, and we have our own constraint solving, and then this will give us the cost of the function, which is a symbolic polynomial. And we don't want to show developers, okay, you increase the cost of the program from 135 to, oh, like 135 to like 52K plus six, right? We want to just show them what matters and this information is captured by asymptotic complexity, and we will show them. And that's like an overview of how the analysis works. Here, this is straight line, but imagine inside the loop, I called some other function here, then I would have to like go analyze that function and get its summary, and what infer can do is, it is very scalable and scales very well to big databases, a bit code bases, so, so far, so good. That's an overview of how the analysis um, works. What are the challenges? Well, as you might imagine, the complexity increase that we have seen in each like <coughs> diff, this could be intended, right? So it's really difficult to know whether the complexity like was supposed to increase. Maybe the developer like made some change and that resulted in like complexity increase. And it's hard to know how the complexity increase corresponds to actual perf metrics. And um, so this is one of the challenges that to look at, like that's why fixed rate is not a very like, useful measure because most of the time developers will want to increase the complexity maybe and we don't want to, like we don't know when it actually corresponds to a perf regression. That's why we are measuring, <coughs> like looking at all the fixed issues but yeah, it's difficult. And now you might say, SG, like we are doing lots of perf monitoring. We have lots of data about uh, logging and we know like how much one function takes, but it's difficult to combine such techniques because such techniques would like run the program hundreds, thousands of times or thousands of times and they will collect aggregate information. Whereas we are focusing on like just single function. Um, so this is also difficult, but um, I'm very curious to know how like, you would approach this problem and uh, this is what we would like to solve at the end, make it more relevant to the developer, how the complexity increase corresponds to an actual metric. And apart from like all these challenges, we also, I mean, it's not all challenge, right? We also get lots of good feedback, developers are uh, abstract that we can, <laughs> we can really detect such perf issues and say, oh, I didn't know you can do this, or we have detected several um, complexity increases, and yeah, I mean, we have detected some really cool stuff, and on, in addition to that, we have different analysis to make the developer relevant. For instance, we can also see that, we can see that um, whenever the complexity increase is on a cold start path, we would make the message more severe, like, hey, you're increasing the complexity, and then um, this is very severe. Okay, so what I wanted to tell you is that like, I'm coming from a static analysis background and when I look at like the performance analysis space, I see that okay, like there are all these static analysis experts and then there are the perf experts who have like really good knowledge about how things work and most of the time like we are looking at different parts of the problem, like we don't really, Realized. And even if we look at like the same parts of the problem, we are looking from different perspectives. And I'm, what I'm really hoping to do in this talk, like in this workshop, is to like understand and try to come together and like see if we can look at problems and come up with like solutions together and collaborate. So I'm very happy to talk to you afterwards. So let our powers combine and let's just talk more about it. So. Um, to summarize, I've shown you about uh, how cool static analysis could be to detect these performance issues and our focus is on impact, not catching like all possible regressions and infer warrants on these like complexity increases but it catches 
really cool other memory issues as well. And it is open source, that's the good thing. You can try it in your own code base and then see if infer would tell you oh, how the complexity increased. So this will be the end of my talk. Um, thank you so much. If you have any questions, I would be happy to take them. Uh, yeah, very good question. Um, so recursion, I mean, we can't detect recur we can't analyze recursive programs. And I would say that when you look at most of the code base, there's not much recursion. So it works like 99.9% .9 of the time. For the time there's some recursion, we won't be able to do it. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's categorically impossible, but very, very difficult. Right. You might need like a theorem prover to help you do that. I mean, theoretically, it could be possible and you can combine it with different approaches, but yeah, we won't go the extra mile to <laughs> handle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hello, uh, you mentioned that uh, it was difficult to combine aggregate performance, like actual uh, information how long a function runs mm -hmm. with what you're doing. But is there any effort you try to make to combine? Like we know that in practice, this function takes from like you know this range of time to run, and combine that with what you're seeing in changes that um, infer Yeah, I think that's possible to do that. Yeah, I'm. I would like to try. So this project has been like in the like f taking the footsteps, running it on scale, and we will we want to do it or combine this with dynamic data. But yeah, it's not straightforward, but it can be done with some heuristics, I suppose, yeah. First of all, really cool work. Like Thank you. To see formal stuff like that work. Uh, I want to see, uh, I w my question is actually on the code generation side, which mm -hmm. is, uh, is there a way of, ext one, is there a way of extending this to account for things like uh, instruction scheduling and uh, things like uh, on, on the mobile phone, uh, the memory access mm -hmm. uh, has serious uh, power costs. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, how chatty you are with the memory. Mm -hmm. so. And, and I think the a more general version of this question is, right now you're looking at what the user is doing in terms of writing the code, but I'm also curious if you have looked at what the code generator or the optimizer is doing, uh, yeah. and maybe detecting regressions there with the same piece of code mm -hmm. has a different code gen path. Yeah, we, we haven't looked at how, like at the backends, we just analyze the source code, right? We don't look inside like how code generation, there are lots of like optimizations done, and. We have like our own team that does cool optimizations. We haven't really ventured into that path. Uh, but this technique I've told you works for not only execution cost analysis, but other type of codes, like you mentioned memory, or it could work for like battery power. Um, we have tried it for allocation increases, like number of allocations. We have run it in the code base. But yeah, again, we have the same challenges, like how do you map this to the dynamic data? But yeah, that really good question. I'll just add uh, two more cents about this uh, question. So basically there is some research right now that is happening around using QAMO to intercept instructions that are being executed for the actual applications and then they use it to estimate the cost. But this is still an area of active research and there is definitely a lot to be done. And hopefully Infer is gonna also invest in this area as well. Okay. Yeah, awesome. Hey. Um. I had a question about uh, one of the comments you made was determining the severity of the change if it's yeah. at the uh, app start or something. Mm -hmm. uh, do you also add more rules as to adjust the severity of your warnings based on what the code is, where the code is intended to run or what it's intending to do? Because it might be a similar complexity increase, but mm -hmm. depending on where it runs in say our GPUs or on a low-end mobile device, the impact might be different. Yeah, yeah, we haven't we haven't tried it how where it runs, but we, for instance, on cold start, we would collect like information from profiling and like combine it with like w w was it running on cold start, and if so, we would increase the severity. But we haven't explored like other type of places. I think that's a good suggestion. Yeah, why not? 
Hi. Uh, so I wonder, do you have a uh, statistics about the false alarm rate, like due to the uh, challenges you just mentioned? Like, for example, um, sometimes when I'm developing a big feature, um, sometimes the uh, performance degradation is inevitable. Um, like, uh, do you have a lot of comments in the such a large, bi a large diff, or uh, how do you deal with that? Yeah, so we don't, like, um, we have rates on whether infer reports and the comp like developer fixes it, right? They make the complexity better. Um, and we know some of the cases that uh, there might be some false positives, right? I mean, that's static analysis. Um, but it's very, very difficult to know what is really a false positive, right? Even not only for performance, but for real code bases, for like functional correctness, right? So it is very difficult. So this is not something that we can scalably measure. We have, we are collecting like um, information. We monitor the diffs we infer comments on, but scalably doing this, I think it's very difficult, yeah. But good, good question. Hi there. Um, curious about something that I've seen in practice. Uh, lots of engineers, because of the sort of standard training in undergrad, tend to look at the static, like the asymptotic cost of their functions and that's, they relatively understand that better. But, so, but a big cost of bugs I've seen in practice is not understanding the cost of what happens when you're asynchronously executing code. Like a lot of application code is very event driven. And I'm curious how applicable this sort of static analysis approach might be to, uh, you know, when you're shifting work around threads using specific APIs or entry points. Yeah, I mean, the, the basic answer, we can't yet deal with this, but there are ways we can combine our own existing analysis, like threads, for instance. We have um, concurrency bug detector, RacerD, which can find issues on like whether things are running on the same thread or whether they read, write access. So, for instance, we can combine this with our own analysis and try to uh, give more information, but like this kind of event-driven asynchronous stuff, it's really difficult to like statically do it without having like knowledge of how the underlying things are implemented. So yeah, it's a challenging problem, but yeah, we can at least maybe have some headway using different checkers of infer and combine them. Yeah, thank you. Hi, my question is to uh, whether it is possible to take advantage of static analysis to track the, some of the resources usage, like for example, the thread or the IO usage when mm -hmm. I like to maybe uh, transfer from a thread spawning to a thread pool approach or maybe I split one RPC calls into two RPC calls. How does this impact my thread or IO usage? Is, is it possible? Um, so we can count different things like I/O or um, memory usage. We can count them like in our model, but combining this with actual like thread information is like I mentioned very difficult. And we can combine it with our own like racer D checker, which has more information about concurrency. But um, really like switching from how the scheduling works and thread like this is this is a very difficult problem. <laughs> Perhaps if I had like 10 PhD students working with me, I could get a grant and work on this one. Yeah. Hi, so my question is, uh, usually how long does it take to run one analysis? Yeah, so this depends on how much, um, this depends on a lot of factors. Mm -hmm. So on a diff, I can't exactly tell you like how long it will take, right? Because it depends on how, this, I introduced this function call and it might have lots of like big dependency, but most of the time, like we can analyze the diff before it gets reviewed and pushed to co code base. So, I mean, is uh, seconds or minutes or uh, hours? Minutes, not sec like depends, yeah, minutes I would say. Uh, yeah. uh, not hours for sure. Okay, so just minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's not seconds, that's why for IDE, we are showing like stale signals. So yeah, doing it like in a second, that would be cool if we had. Yeah. Hey, thank you very much for the talk. Uh, it was very useful. I was wondering how uh, extensible the tool is. Is it possible to add any domain specific performance checks? Um, like what? 
uh, like uh, let's say uh, for a specific company we want we have certain behaviors that we see in our uh, like uh, yeah yeah, yeah. you can extend it for instance one of the challenges is like you have lots of library calls right you need to write models for this so one of the ways we do we would extend the analysis say hey like there's this function call let's model it in our setting as being o n where n is the argument so you can have your own domain specific setting and say oh this function takes like O1 or ON, you can define it and yeah, very extensible in that sense. Hi, I think it's very impressive too and uh, I have a question. Is there a plan to expand it to other languages, programming languages like Python? <laughs> yes, so there is no immediate plan because, so this tool is like looking at static languages, right, you could you could write a new front-end for Python or like other dynamic languages, but um, it is theoretically possible, but we have not uh, ventured into that yet. It's, it's a, it requires like lots of developer time to write a new front-end, yeah. Uh, do you analyze the function definition or how it's called? So like if you've made a function more complex, but you only called it in cases where that like big n function resolves to a smaller number, would that be detected as a regression uh, error? The, the later part, if it was? So, so like if you change a function from like oh linear to exponential, yeah. Yeah. but you, or well, that's, that's a bad example, but like one where mm -hmm. like the curves like yeah. do that, and but you always call it in the case where your new one is better, is that a, can you detect if uh, You mean if we know the size of the input yeah. statically? Uh, I think we don't, so, okay, depends if we can uh, statically estimate the size. So the way this whole analysis works, which I haven't explained, is we have a um, we have an analysis which gives interval ranges on size of the values. So this is called like an, an another checker in Farbo, which is used for like buffer overrun analysis detection. And there we have interval information. So if we can statically know that, okay, this is called like O1, this is ON, but if we call this function with an n, which is like really small, right? Yeah. Then we would know that at the call side, this won't be linear, but instead constant. Yeah. But it is only if we know the size, like statically but we can actually, yeah. you can detect that. Yeah, we can oh detect that, yes, yes. Okay, one last question. Yeah, I had one more question. Uh, just from your learnings, have, um, have you encountered situations and do you think this would be useful as well if we can not only flag um, potential regressions, but also tell engineers how to make it better, like suggestions? Yes, yes, so I worked on this as well. So one of the things is to go with this is, my idea was to like go with detecting perf optimizations. One simple example is like if you are iterating over a map with a key set and then you get like the key and the value, right? So you can instead iterate over entry set. So there is like a clear optimization pattern and we have checkers that will tell you, hey, like this would, even though it's not linear, it's some constant increase, but still it would make the code like to iterate over an entry set would be more efficient. So we have ways of like new checkers we tell you, okay, you can use this. Or we have another um, anal analyzer that I worked on is loop hoisting. Right. Compilers only can do loop hoisting at the instruction level, and but not at the level of functions. So we can analyze and say, okay, this function you can hoist out. The, the optimization or the way to fix it is very simple. We can, th we have checkers for this that I have like I worked on, but scaling this up to everything is very difficult, right? Most often, um, it's not very clear like how the performance should be fixed. It depends on the, Developer, I don't know, but based on my uh, observations, I wrote like these two checkers I have mentioned. And sometimes we have observed things like, okay, you can push this heavy computation into the constructor, right? This is one suggestion, but statically telling like which one to do, it's not possible in all cases, yeah. But doable, I think, for a subset of things. 